Hi everyone, welcome to this new Substance Designer 5 tutorial. Uh, today we are going to make a tutorial about uh, how to make a procedural eye inside um, Substance Designer. Uh, this is something that I've been testing and playing uh, a lot like a few months ago. And many people ask me for if I can make a tutorial from it, so that's what I'm going to do today. So basically what we are going to try to make is this. Uh, which is an eye that uh, in which you have some control, like for example, um, you can define the pupil parameter, and as you can see, you have all the iris. Iris, I don't know how to say in English, I think I would say iris is following because basically, this is the iris that is pulling uh, the, the pupil on to open it and close it, depending on the, the light. So, as I told you, I made it a few months ago, so it may be a bit different because I don't remember everything and uh, I will start from scratch. So, let's start. So, for, for the shape first, uh, just take uh, something like this. So, it's, uh, this one was made by one of my friends, but uh, actually, uh, if you know a bit of 3D modeling, and I hope you, know, you do, you should be able to do something like that. And the UVs are looking like this. So you see, um, the, here there is a trick that I cut the UVs in the middle and they are done this way. S as we are supposed in the read just to see one, one side of the eye, it should be fine. Anyway, so let's start. I'm going to create a new graph. I'm going to be on physically based. I call it tutorial. I'm going to call it I tutorial two forty eight. Uh, I'm going to start with one twenty four, which should be enough. Let's go. So basically, the first step. Uh, by the way, th this will be. Um, this tutorial will be made in different uh, videos, not only one, because I want. It's, there is some parts which are quite long. So the first video would be about defining the different shapes and focusing uh, and focusing about the the blank part with uh, the vein, which correspond to this part here. I'm going to rename that. Rename. Okay, so first what you need to do uh, is to create some mask for your different zones. So an easy way to do that is to take to shape, to create it like that, and both will be disk. So far I'm not focusing about uh, defining exactly uh, how the shape will look. I'm more looking about defining the where the things will be. So this one will be my pupil and this one my iris. So this one I will invert it like that. And this one I'm going to plug it to see. And of course it's too much right now. So I'm going to define the size to something like around that seems to be fine. And for the pupil, what I'm going to do is create a blend node. Yep. Here. I'm going to plug this here. And uh, I'm going to put it to um, darken mode. And I'm going to change the size of the shape. So if you hear something, some noise around me, don't worry, it's because I'm at work uh, during my pause and as it's extremely hot this year outside, uh, pre uh, people prefer to to enjoy the air conditioning rather uh, than the, the sun. Okay, so here it is. So right now we have our three main shapes. So we have like 
the iris, the pupil here, and now we are going to put some colors. But what I'm going to do, as I know there is three main shapes, I'm going to create frames right now to organize a bit my my work. So I'm going to do three of them. One, two, and three, and I'm going to organize them from top to bottom. So, uh, white part, iris, and pupil. Like that. So, Let's start with the white part. So first I'm going to put some fake color just in order to organize that. Then this is my pupil mask that I'm going to put there. This is my uh, my array, sorry, my pupil mask here. And this is shape of both. So what I'm going to do now is to to put uh, some color so uh, because it's be easier to work. So what you can do for that don't invent, uh, reinvent the wheel. Go on uh, um, a Google uh, image, it eye close up, and you have tons of eyes. So depending on the style you want, if you want something like realistic or something a bit more uh, stylized, it's up to you. Me, I'm going to focus on that. It won't be on the same screen. I'm going to put them on my left, but I'm going to basically grab the color of this eye because as you can see the, the white is never completely white and uh, it's something like a, around 230 something like that but I prefer to, to trust the real world in that kind of stuff so first uniform color pick which is here on 5.1 I'm going to pick the color on the left screen that you don't see and you see I'm around and in value around 220 more, more or less. I'm going to do the same for the eyes. I'm going to, to take maybe this color. So I'm going to do a uniform color again that I'm going to put here. Like that. And once again, I pick to something brown like this. It's not important right now, it's just to make it more uh, enjoyable to work with and the, the pupil really will remain black of course. So what we can do now is to create a blender like this where we plug one color here the, the white color here, sorry, the iris, and it just create like that. And we are going to do the same with the other one, which is actually I'm going to still going to create a uniform color just to to be consistent. It's not necessary. I could have used this map directly, but let's be consistent. So I'm going to. Create a blend node, and as I s keep this selected, you see that we have it here. I'm going to plug the white color, and I'm going to use this mask, and it shouldn't work because it's inverted. So I'm going to use this mask. Okay. And now that's what is going to be our placeholder diffuse. If you want to stop here, you can, but uh, it really depends on the style you want. It's a bit simpler. Huh? So let's continue. So right now we are going to focus, as we say, on the white part. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to show you something. Maybe you don't know which is the pin. I don't use it a lot. Maybe it's the second time I use it with you, but this allows you to I'm going to put a second one here and a second one here just to, to show you because it could be interesting I, I don't put name because the name is just below but basically right now if I type on F2 you are just going from one part to the other so if you have a big graph 
and instead of going OK with my stuff, you can do that. Of course, you can put a name as well, so it could help you. So I think it's F2 to go, and if, if I'm not wrong, it's Control F2 or Shift F2 to go back. Okay, so pupil wiper, pupil yes. So it's F2 or Shift F2. So cool stuff. So right now, let's try it. So my white part. So we have a fake color, but as I say, what we want to do is something like this. Well, actually, you have some veins, and later on, we want to put some control on the vein. How, let's see, bloody, veiny, I don't know if this one exists, uh, is this part. So, how to do that? What you need to do that, oh, my, sorry, you may have seen it, it's a splatter circle. A splatter circular, right now, like this. We are going to play a bit with that. The uniform color may disappear soon, so I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put some space to, to work. And the first part is to define the shape we want, so it would be something like this maybe. Actually, we are going to change the, the side, but first, no, actually, it's not important. This one I'm going to put 0 0.5 and this one extremely thin. Okay, so so far it doesn't make any sense, but first you can center the orientation. You want to put the pattern pivot to max. Uh, does it make sense, max? Um, let's compare. Mean goes away and here we are going to fix something. Right now it's tiling, so it's repeating everywhere, and we don't want that. So you go in the base parameters, tiling mode to absolute, and no tiling. Okay, so basically, as you see, is when you put to max, uh, to max, I don't make a mistake, no, to minimum, it will. Um, the radius and the change you make on the size we start from the minimum point if you do for the max like that it's the contrary it's the ma the pivot point let's say will be the the max uh, the top uh, coordinate and if you do in the center that will be in the center so in our case let's do minimum I don't think it's that important but mm -hmm. Just so we know what we do, what we're going to do is to, to plug it directly here. So we see exactly where we are. And we are going, so let's go back here. And we are going to put way more stuff. And I say way more, you can put like start with 500. Maybe too much right now, but okay. Put 200, so we we'll see what we do. Okay, so right now we are going to add a bit of randomness with all of this. So, the radius number, radius is fine. We may want up to here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put them back in center and change the radius. Here, center. And I play with the radius. I need to put a bit. Okay, so something like that should be fine. We'll tweak it later. Pattern size is fine. Uh, we want even smaller, so something really thin. It's veins. Pattern scale. We are going to um, to put like zero zero point seven. Which means that we, once again we have to play with the radius and diminish it like that. There is some artifact here, but don't worry, it's just because we are not at 100%. But here there is no no problem. No pattern scale random. We are going to put a bit of randomness here, like uh, 0.3. So you see that we start to get different size. 
a position random uh, we may want to do that yeah actually yeah we're going to put it to max we don't have any random uh, we have a random mask but we this is something that we may want to expose later on and so far let's so rotation uh, we would use that but not now not like that because we want the rotation to be random so we we'll use that like this which is not that bad and now I'm going to put a oops eight no a thousand eight hundred is better okay so this is nice okay let's continue random mask and say no center rotation we don't necessarily want it to be center so we are going to put it to force uh, pattern pivot let's try I think we did it already we don't want that we don't want that okay luminance runs down luminance base scan actually let me see something Uh, this is this is interesting. So let's keep that this way. So now let's say we're satisfied with this. What we want to do is we don't them we don't want them to be straight straight like this. So we are going to <coughs> to tweak it a bit. So in order to do that, what we are going to do is to take the warp node, the second one. And we are going to use um, a Perlin mask, a Perlin noise to warp it. As I want some control, I will take this one. Okay, I will start to get something way too strong, but that's still the idea. So what we want to do is something like like this, maybe. We are going to change, change a bit the value of that. You, you, there is some stuff that sometimes you don't want, but don't forget that uh, most of it, uh, it would be really transparent, so I think it's fine. Yeah. What we, if we so now what we are going to do, we could play for hours with that, but I don't want to spend all the, the time to do that. Okay. Okay, just change the radius a bit. Actually, actually no, that's fine. So now I will use another shape, <coughs> and I will take I think the let's see this one the pa 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 <laughs> and I'm going to mix these two. So blend. Um, and what I want is to say um, the white the the white part will be <coughs> sorry the white of the eyes and the black will be the the bloody part. So I'm going to case the contrary. So what I will do is subtract. And I got something interesting. Yeah, so that's what I want. But uh, what I may want to do this is to neat so what I'm going to do is to add a warp here as well like that and I'm, I'm going to use a cloud now a cloud noise and this one which is not too strong so here it's not what we want it's look like the almost like the moon surface but what I'm going to do is to diminish the intensity To get something like this, where we have some relief. So now I have something like that. And what I'm going to do as well is here I'm going to diminish the opacity a bit, so I get something here that progressively diminish. So let's see. <coughs> Sorry. So now I'm going to use a gradient map to give some color to that. So basically, as we say, 
black is red and white is uh, well, white so what I'm going to do is to find my white I take this, I pick and I take this one like that and now I need to find a, a between red and pink desaturated color like if I take something like that it will be more like this and I will diminish the value this and the saturation and I will push it a bit more not that much like this the value is too strong okay, let's say let's see how it works so right now what I'm going to do is to put it here okay and let's grab this back here okay so we start to get something interesting here so what I want to do is I'm going to right now to plug a bit some stuff here so get something more realistic so first I need a normal so in order to generate the normal what I will take is this mask here and actually let's try because I'm maybe not be satisfied because I don't want this to be uh, uh, inverted and it will be the case so if I want to do that what I'm going to do I'm going to make another blend node here and I'm going to push this and um, this and I'm going to say uh, max maybe yeah max should be fine and this is what I would plug into my normal okay too strong of course but the thing here is I can diminish the intensity of the veins I'm, make, I'm making sure that this is black and we're going to tweak a bit the roughness to get something uh, that shines but not that much you can put like that but that's not what I want something like that should be fine so it's not that bad I'm going still too strong in my opinion so if I do F2 let's try and see well it works well so first I'm going to saturate a bit that because I want something a bit more like this and you see just by playing with that I can define until where goes the blob and this I will saturate a bit more like that okay nice and uh, here I will push a bit the radius so it doesn't go that close to the eye and once again I'm going to diminish the intensity of this actually I think it's it deserves a bit of blur because you see it's not blur, blur enough so first I'm going here to to diminish how strong they are it's the same thing here I don't want them to take all the the value okay so this is the first part I think that's it um, as you can see it was quite easy uh, nothing crazy it's just uh, using the, what we have here in a good way uh, the only thing maybe is think about using the splatter circular and playing with the warmth we can use uh, make some cool effect and after it's just coloring and tinting what we, ha <coughs> what we have so in the second section I 
Um, well, I don't know yet because the iris is more complex to do uh, than the pupil, definitely. Uh, but at the same time, we we want to link them both because, as I say, we want to to mimic this effect where the the actually the iris is like acting as a um, as a muscle to to move the iris and everything moves together. So, so I think we will make one or two videos about the iris and then we'll go to the pupil. So I hope you like this video. Once again if you have any comment, anything to add to say uh, that you like, you don't like, don't hesitate to share it in the comments. Thank you and have a great day.